This is Twit. It speaks to me a little, uh, a little, a little more than some of the other stuff that we've talked about today, only because. In the preparation that I do for for the shows that we do on the network, so uh, like we we've got subscriptions to a lot of the sites that we pull news from, uh, but we don't. I mean, obviously, we can't buy a subscription to every single site. And every once in a while, you run into that free article limit, and dang it, I want to read this. I want to invite that person on to talk about their <laughs> article, and I can do nothing. Uh, well, I guess I so could what you're, sign up. But anyways, so what you're talking about is that we've probably all encountered teaser paywall websites that allow a limited number of articles to be viewed per month by non-subscribers. Um, and this sort of feels like a workable compromise between fully open and fully closed sites. They're clearly hoping that you'll, you know, it's, you know, they're wanting you to see all their goodness rather than never be able to see any. Um, but obviously they're hoping that to upsell you into uh, establishing a, a subscription. So, they're hoping that you'll find value there and then be annoyed when that one article you really want to read fades out into that notice that the site requires a monthly fee for you to keep reading. It, it, I, I get hit by that all the time, just like you, Jason, when you're putting this, when the shows together. And this, of course, begs the question, how are they counting the number of pages you visited? <clears throat> um, the answer could be some form of fingerprinting. But we know that browser fingerprints, while while uh, containing some entropy, are not unique. Many other browser users will coincidentally have a browser with the same fingerprint since it's just based on a bunch of characteristics that are visible from script on your browser. Um, and these sites are not attempting to block rocket scientists, after all from having access, they're only trying to put up a barrier to casual users, which is to say, it's not like it's impossible to get around this. So uh, the way they're clearly doing it is by the universally available first party domain cookies, which everybody has enabled in order to effectively use the internet. Um, so it wasn't long before people who want to read that one additional article, but didn't want to join up, discovered that switching to their favorite browser's incognito or private browsing mode, whatever it's called on your browser, made that possible. Since private browsing deliberately does not record first party domain cookies, or for that matter, anything else, a user of an incognito browser is suddenly unknown and always starts out with a zeroed prior articles counter since they appear as an unknown, uncookified visitor. Um, and of course, uh, in this cat and mouse world, just as it didn't take long for the users of, of private browsing to, for this trick to become widespread, uh, and, you know, spread uh, either be to be discovered independently or spread by word of mouth. Neither did it take the web developers then long to figure out a way, at least in the case of the Internet's number one web browser, Chrome, how to detect when somebody was visiting their paywalled site incognito. Um, and then, <clears throat> for example, if you visit any article on the Washington Post's website using Chrome's incognito mode, you'll be greeted with the message, quote, we noticed you're browsing in private mode. Private browsing is permitted exclusively for our subscribers. Wait, what? Uh, <laughs> if you're a subscriber, <laughs> then they know who you are. and That's not very private. But they said... And then, and their note continues, turn off private browsing to keep reading this story or subscribe to use this feature plus get unlimited digital access, unquote. But, but wait, what? The idea of being identified, even as someone who is visiting incognito, sort of puts the lie to the whole incognito thing, Right. Indeed. Uh, it's like, wait a second, you're not supposed to know anything about me, including, and perhaps even importantly, 
that I have deliberately chosen not to have you know anything about me, including that. So this occurred to the engineers at, as, Le as Leo used the term last week, uh, the Goog, which is now. <laughs> no, I, I love it. Now, it's an endearing term. The Goog, yes. The this Goog. occurred to the engineers at the Goog. So they decided to do something about it. It turns out that Chrome's incognito mode disables its file system API, as you would want it to, as part of Chrome's effort to prevent the user's activities from leaving any lasting traces in the system. Websites figured out that this could be easily checked with a bit of JavaScript running on the page. So that's what generates that please disable your incognito mode to receive a limited amount of free stuff message. Consequently, at the end of this month, actually it'll be July 30th, one week from today, we're going to be getting Chrome 76 with a file system API that no longer gives away the fact that the browser is, the browser is in incognito mode or the browser's incognition. Uh, and just in case, publishers then go searching for some other method to detect private browsing, since Google really does wish to avoid having its incognito visitors flagged, the Goog have stated that, quote, Chrome will likewise work to remedy any other current or future means of, of incognito mode detection. So be, be forewarned, you web developers out there, the Goog is going to work to protect its users' privacy. And uh, now we all know, well, I didn't realize it before, but that's going to come in handy now, that I'll be able to use uh, in private mode or incognito mode or whatever it's called uh, to avoid those notices. So thank you, Goog. Thank you, the Goog.